Have you ever felt burned out? Perhaps even now you're dealing with burnout. And so the question is, is how do you define it? What is burnout? It's not rust out that I'm talking about. In fact, some folks are are inactive and they've never been involved and and so they don't intend to be involved they'll simply sit and collect dust or rust away they don't need to be vaccinated against burnout because you can't burn out if you've never been on fire burnout also is not cop out this is the person who says yeah i'll get involved you can count on me But as soon as a responsibility is assigned, the excuses start coming. Such a person doesn't really want to give himself or herself or risk or spend himself or herself on something or someone because it simply costs too much. Rust out and cop out might be bigger problems than burnout in many lives. But burnout is what we're talking about today. Burnout is what results when there is a dichotomy between expectations and reality. To put it simply, burnout is a condition that is created by a person who tries to accomplish more than he or she can realistically do without help. So what causes burnout? Well, there's a few things that I'd like to highlight. First is pride. Pride can cause burnout. It's the belief that the world would fall apart if we didn't have our hands in everything. We get this idea that if I'm not in on this, things will never get done the right way. Really. What that means is, if I'm not in on it, things will not get done in a way that pleases me. So you may tend to overextend yourself and burn out because you feel like you need to have your hand in everything. Secondly, guilt. I don't feel like I'm doing all that I can do. I don't feel like I ever am doing enough. I'm not carrying my weight. I feel like I let the team down. And motivated by guilt, pretty soon we sign up for everything and we find ourselves challenged in that. Number three, it's the inability to say no. We can only do so much. So this inability to say no can stretch us all out of shape personally and prevent us from developing other people around us to be of service. No one of us can do everything and be what we should be in other areas of our lives. It's difficult to say no, but we must do it on occasion to avoid burnout. And finally, fourthly, people. Burnout can come from allowing someone else's sense of urgency to become our emergency. People in crisis situations can put unreasonable pressure on us to respond immediately. Overwhelmed emotionally, this distraught individual is often unable to think rationally and as a result places overwhelming expectations upon others to help and to help now. Caregivers often find themselves in a place of burning out in this situation as they sincerely try to meet the demanding, pressing, and continuous needs of those they look after. And the more effectively that we handle our responsibilities and care for others, the more people want us to help them and to guide them. And so it can put debilitating pressure on us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And if we are not careful, 
Burnout can lead us down a path towards addiction. Many who were caught in addiction's claws have valiantly fought back through participating in 12-step programs where they are introduced to a relationship with God. And I want you to know that a relationship with God makes all of the difference. Most 12-step groups enthusiastically embrace the idea of praying as part of their session and asking God for help. They do it in a format known as the serenity prayer. They don't pray the whole prayer, but they pray the part that says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I say amen to that, and may God help us all.